I'm excited. All coming from a gaming laptop. This is one cable. I'm not using the desktop, I promise. We clearly are running into a CPU bottleneck here. This video is sponsored by Dashlane. Did you know that we now have RTX 3000 series in both laptops and desktops? Super fancy, I know. If you're looking for the latest and greatest performance, then you can find it on this table. But the question that I had was, what is the difference really between the desktop and the laptops? They're pretty much the same chips, so are they gonna perform more or less the same? And right out the gate, we do know that there is gonna be a difference because after all, the laptop size chassis is a lot smaller than even a small desktop chassis. And of course, the power delivery is gonna be completely different between the two. Here we have a mains cable, and this will pull around about 300 watts or so into the graphics card when it's under max load. Whereas something like a laptop, that's just not feasible, even if you are plugging it into the mains. So how much of a difference are we going to get? And is it gonna be enough to swing you one way or the other? I would actually reckon yes, so let's find out. Of course, I probably should introduce you to the laptops that we're using here. This is the Asus TUF F15, so this is brand new. This is actually using an Intel CPU as well, so this is a quad-core CPU matched with a mobile RTX 3070. And then this one is a lot bigger. This is the Strix G15, so it's a 15-inch laptop. It's a little bit thicker, but it's still very, very sleek. It even comes with a 300 hertz refresh rate, which maybe in games like CSGO, you'd be able to max that out. But of course, in most games, you probably won't really get anywhere near it to be honest with you but it's something we'll be testing today but of course like all laptops you're going to want to connect these to the mains to get the most amount of frames per second. Something that's changed this year that's actually very very significant is that most gaming laptops that I've seen at least at the higher end are now using Ryzen CPUs so this is a Ryzen 5000 series it's a Ryzen 7 this is an eight core chip so double the amount that we found in the previous laptop but the single core performance on this has made a tremendous jump to what we've seen before so in CPU limited titles, which when we're packing an RTX 3070 or 3080 could be quite a few, especially at 1080p, it's going to make a big difference. The way that this is going to work is pretty straightforward. We have our gaming laptops, we're going to run some games, we're going to look at the performance, not only in terms of actual benchmarks, but real world gameplay as well on both the laptops and the desktops. But before we get there, a quick word from our sponsor that's going to help you keep safe and secure online. Are you struggling to remember all of your passwords? You probably started reusing the same ones across multiple sites now, haven't you? Even though that you know it's a bad, bad idea. Luckily for all of us though, there's a solution, Dashlane. Dashlane is the password manager that can not only make your life easier, but up your security too. This incredibly easy tool manages passwords, addresses, and credit cards, which not only makes online checkouts a breeze, but creates unique, super strong passwords that aren't shared across sites. This means that you never need to remember hundreds of passwords ever again, just one single strong master password and then let Dashlane do the rest. Unlike other tools, Dashlane works across multiple platforms, so if you have a Windows PC, an Apple tablet and an Android phone, you still have access to all of your passwords anywhere and everywhere. They even have a VPN, so you can roam beyond your borders or appear in your home country even when you're not. To get Dashlane for free on your first device, go to dashlane.com slash PCcentric, and when you do want to upgrade to premium, use my code PCcentric. I'll tell you what, I am absolutely fascinated with just how all of this tech works, because it seems that every, what, couple of years or so, we seem to get so much more performance in the same sort of size chassis. Is there a limit to the amount of performance you can get from a GPU, or is this just gonna go on forever? <laughs> it's been ages since I've last used this SSD and I forgot my funny name. I decided to call this login Richard Thrust. I'm easily amused. We've got our frame rate counters open and that is pretty much the most apples to apples test I think that we can get. So this is 1080p ultra settings. So this is a 1440p display down res to 1080p. And right off the bat, we can see that our laptop is getting around about 81 frames a second. And here we're getting 130. So that's quite a big difference. Bearing in mind these are both 3070s. It's not a couple of frames in it now, is it? Taking absolutely everything else out of the equation for a second and just talking about the raw gameplay experience, Far Cry plays really nicely on this laptop. It's around about 70 to 80 frames a second, which for a game like this is higher than I guess you'd get on most consoles. It's not the absolute smoothest thing out there. It's not taking full advantage 
of the 144 hertz display, but that's not really a problem to be honest with you. But the thing that I've noticed straight off the bat is that this is the Intel laptop, it's only four cores. And whilst it's not saying that our CPU utilization is 100%, we clearly are running into a CPU bottleneck here because we're only getting around about 70% of that GPU utilization. 121 on the desktop versus 78. Of course, most of us are actually going to be using these gaming laptops at home, so what if you want to plug into a 1440p monitor and actually play at 1440p? Is this going to help reduce the CPU bottleneck? Our desktop then got 113 frames a second at 1440p, and this PC is running a 3700X. That is, of course, an 8-core, whereas our laptop Intel CPU is a quad, and we are actually getting much better GPU utilization now, around about 90 to 95%, so much, much better. 68 frames a second. If I'm honest, I expected it to be a little bit closer, but that really does show you the difference between the 3070 laptop versus the 3070 desktop. There's a big difference, and despite the fact that they're called pretty much the same thing, Essentially, they're not the same thing. Well, they're really not the same thing, right? But again, 68 frames a second on a 1440p monitor all powered from a laptop is definitely nothing to be sniffed at. Let's try and even it up a little bit as we move on to our next game, though, by going to an even higher-end laptop, the Strix G15. There's only one game for a time like this. Some Cyberpunk 2077! Woo! The beauty of cross save, here we have the exact same location within the city, pretty intensive, this is ultra settings, DLSS with ray tracing, so the works, pretty much everything that you'd want for a 3070. I've actually now finished playing Cyberpunk from start to finish, it took me around about 40 hours, so there's still a lot more I could be doing. But I think I actually played the game at around about 60 to 70 frames a second on my ultra wide. If you turn the ray tracing off, you are going to see a big difference in terms of your frame rate. But to really get the proper full fat gaming experience, next gen malarkey, all of that good stuff, I think you do need to turn it on. The game is still so buggy though, I'm like teleporting forward. Why? Why? Let's get in on the old Quad HD action then. The only other change I'll make is reducing the DLS from quality to balanced. And we've only dropped around about six frames a second, really. Around about 49 on average at the moment. That is impressive. Again, all coming from a gaming laptop. This is one cable. I'm not using the desktop, I promise. Look. I'm pressing the keys and we're moving. The thing is, it's such a visual game that you get to a point like we are here where you take a look around and it's just so dense. There's not really any other games quite like this on the market. It's, it's not perfect, but these are the exact moments where it's just so nice to have all of that eye candy turned on and have that high resolution to be able to properly appreciate it. It's nice that you can, of course, tailor your experience to however you want to play, but if you're looking at a laptop like this, wondering whether it can play a game like Cyberpunk at max settings, then the answer clearly is yes. Jumping back onto the desktop, and there is definitely a noticeable difference in terms of the way the game feels. That frame rate's gone up by around about 6 to 10 frames a second, depending on where you are in the game. Don't go thinking it's going to be a game-changing experience, but moving around in some of the easier bits of the game when it jumps nearer the 60 FPS mark, it definitely does feel that little bit more smoother, but it's really nice for me to see actually just how close these two things can be. It's only really the CPU that's actually holding this laptop back, as once we're playing at a high resolution then it becomes obviously less of an issue. But of course this has a 1080p screen, so if you're only going to be playing on the laptop display, then you're not actually going to be able to tap into the full gaming performance that's available under the hood. But it will vary between game to game, but obviously this is something you want to last for years and years to come. Apex Legends, and it is actually Still technically season seven. We've got about an hour to go, ladies and gentlemen, before Fuse gets here. I'm excited. Fuse tea is also pretty good. It's got hibiscus or something in it, it's nice. Starting us off on the laptop then, you can see we're getting a very impressive frame rate, but it's not anywhere near that 300 maximum that you can get from this particular screen. I personally play Apex at around about 150 frames a second, so this feels very familiar to me, to be honest. You can see it is a little bit variable, it's just jumped up there to around about 180 or so. So clearly this is a fantastic experience, and I don't think that the CPU is really holding us back, I would guess, in this particular title. Maybe if you had an RTX 3080, then you would start to see a little bit reduced performance. But I mean, what's the point of an RTX 3080? If you're going to be running this at 1080p and a 3070 is bottlenecked, then clearly a 3080 laptop isn't really 
the best idea to be honest unless you're playing at a higher resolution or you are going to hook it up to an external display. My favourite bit of every video now then, it's time to place your bets. What is the difference going to be in Apex? Around about 155 frames a second to beat. Will we beat that or will we be way off the mark? Well, we seem to have our answer already because we've got around about 160 frames a second. And I thought, whoa, that's close. And then I remembered that we're running at 1440p and I need to lower the resolution down. Here we go. 209 frames a second straight out of the gate. I'm not even recording. I'm getting way too excited. Here we go. And yes, around about 200 frames a second exactly. So that is still a fair old difference, around about 40 to 50 frames a second more on the desktop. You don't have to put up with any of the horrible noise that gaming laptops are going to make. But this is exactly why I say in pretty much all of my videos that it makes sense to get what's best for you and nobody else, because we're all different. For me, obviously a gaming laptop at the moment doesn't really make much sense because I don't do any travelling. My life is quite literally spent in these four walls, as you guys have probably worked out by now. And the point of this video was to absolutely not bash these new laptops at all. I think they're really impressive. I just want to identify not only the, I guess, slight issue that you have at the moment with CPU bottlenecks. I don't like the fact that they're called exactly the same things, a 3070 and then 3070 laptop. I don't think that really tells the full story of just how different they are. And you could argue that you should know that a laptop isn't gonna perform as well as a desktop, but at the same time, people that are buying one of these things for the first time, I think they probably would expect them to perform exactly the same if they sound like they have the same name. So that's the point of this video, just to show you that if you are choosing between the two, and you don't necessarily need the portability, I would always recommend really that you go for a desktop. But likewise, if you need the portability, then always go for the laptop. That's gonna make a whole lot more sense for you. Let me know your thoughts on this down in that comment section below. Was this a good test? Would you like to see more like this in the future? Are you team laptop, team desktop? I would absolutely love to hear from you. Don't forget to get subscribed for more videos just like this. And if you do wanna check out current pricing on any of the stuff featured here today, be it the desktop, the laptop, the mouse, or the keyboards that I absolutely can't stand, but more on that in a future video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Smash that like button. Go on, do it. Even if you never do it, this is your first time. Smash that like button. It'll mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.